This is Braun Strowman, the monster among men. And you're listening to the Bob Culture Podcast with your host, Rob! All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very special episode of the BCP. I'm excited for this one. And someone please warn the Ninja Turtles because I have two shredders here today. That's right. A shredder and a super shredder. Which one's which? I'm just kidding, guys. Thank you so much for a few minutes. Please welcome to the show as we talk all things music and wrestling. First, welcome to the show. And you've seen his themes on AEW Dark, the Indies, and many, many more. You know him from the Armchair Booker's podcast. Please welcome to the show, songwriter Mr. John Kiernan. What's up, bro? How are you? Oh, man, this is such a different environment that I'm used to. But I am so excited <laughs> to be talking with you two beautiful gentlemen tonight. We're talking about music. We're talking about wrestling themes. I am excited, my guys. How you guys feeling? I'm great, man. And I'm super excited. Thank you for taking the time, man. It's, it's an honor. Just, you know, uh, on the show, we do a lot of wrestling. We do uh, support a lot of the local bands. So I love when these worlds kind of collide. You know, it's not always pretty when worlds collide, as we as we see in the business. But uh, this is a lot of fun. And I'm also very excited. And guys, please welcome to this show. You've seen his themes on the indies, on AWR, all over the place. Singer, songwriter, shredder, and one of the only people on the entire planet to get a like from MJF. Please welcome to the show. And from these wolves, Mr. What's up, bro? How are you? That was the best intro ever. <laughs> <laughs> You're not worthy, but, man. <laughs> but yes, th thank you for having me. It's, it's definitely an honor. No, and it was a pleasure meeting you uh, at Synergy. Again, another one of the hardest uh, working men in the business. And I'll ask you this real quick right out of the gate, Darren. What was it like getting that feedback from MJF? That's like a rare moment right there. Yeah, the uh, music supervisor, Mikey Rockus, he, like, warned me not to tag MJF in anything, <laughs> so I purposely didn't, um, and so it's just uh, a fan who liked the, the song tweeted out to MJF, and I was like, oh, crap, and then I got a DM from him saying, like, send me the song, and I was like, oh, crap, so I sent him the song, I was like, oh, I have an instrumental version, I have an alternate version, and I have this, hopefully you like it, and then he just, like, sent the the like thing and i was like oh crap it happened and then it just started blowing up from there so it, it's super awesome that's like bucket list stuff right there man so congratulations and to both you guys congratulations on all your success you know as, as a drummer who's played in the asbury park music scene since i was 16 years old you know jersey's a great place to be uh for all this stuff you know obviously 2020 hasn't been kind to the music scene but it's good to see uh you guys thrive and succeed so uh john i'll throw it to you man tell us how you kind of got your start uh with the music and then more so writing for the indie talent yeah man just in general i've been doing music professionally for about 15 years now or so but when it came to doing the wrestling stuff it was kind of like it was in a way kind of random like i've always wanted to do it but and i think you guys could attest to this whenever you ask anybody how to get in the industry everyone's like <laughs> what like i ah uh, and they always there's never like a real answer to it because everybody has their own path that they take but um you know with the podcast that we do uh, armchair bookers podcast we do different sorts of uh, wrestling conversations and one of the things we wanted to do was be like okay cool how can we find more ways to introduce people to what we do and uh, one of them was like, oh, you do music. Why don't you do wrestling themes? I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, that'd be that'd be cool. Like, I don't even know how to go about doing that. And the first person I reached out to was actually a Ricky Gibson over from uh, Four Minutes to Heat, who if you guys haven't seen these guys, this tag team, they're just awesome. They're great guys. And especially in COVID time 2020, one of the best uh, teams to do this whole thing where they're building themselves up in the COVID time. You know, I just reached out to them. I was like, hey, I don't know what you guys have for themes. I don't know how it really works, but I'd love to do one for you. And then just, you know, one thing led to another. And now we're about 30 themes in. So it's uh, it's crazy. And it's just, it's it's nuts. There's been a lot of referrals and I'm I'm grateful for everyone who I've written for. So it was just kind of like by accident, but I'm happy that people are hearing and people still want stuff. So it's crazy. It's a man and congratulations on all your success man a lot of great themes uh and thank you for including me obviously shameless promo on mimi's theme it was kind of you know kind of a dream for me come true you know i would love to perform it live but just have my drums uh, on an actual wrestler's track and, and a wrestler that we're very much behind here on the bcp um and you've done great themes uh, with the stepdads uh, other friends of the show obviously you guys have seen your guys themes or heard i should say on aw dark i mean that's got to be a great feeling but darren i'll throw it over to you man how did you get your start um in the music side of things and the wrestling side of things 
Well, I was in bands for a very long time, like everybody, all these failed local bands. And uh, when I started, <laughs> well, uh-huh. yeah, when, when I started These Wolves in 2016, like getting on a re- like a wrestling theme was like a bucket list uh, item that I never thought I would do. So I kind of like uh, was putting out music as like just a regular like regular artist, you know, not really knowing what I was doing. And then um, eventually I-, I was watching this YouTuber named Chris Danker. He's Dank Ops. He's like one of one of like the big WWE 2K uh, creators. And I saw he was doing a video for like Wrestle War, like he was doing like a series. And I was like, hey, you know, do you need a theme song? Like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So do, do you want a theme song? He's like, sure. So he like he was using like Fire Pro. He's playing Fire Pro uh, wrestling, and he made something like that. And he used Dead to Me, and then he wanted to use Enough Is Enough for Wrestle War, but he wanted to rap over it. So he, I was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe we can do like you can use the theme, and then like a special one, like a pay per view, you can rap over it as like you know a special thing. He's like, well, I don't think I'm gonna do pay per views. So how about I just rap over it? And I was like, well, okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> so he uh, he did it, and it was fine. But then people started saying, like, oh, I love Chris's rap. And I was like, it's my song. <laughs> so uh, I, like, work-shooted a, a music video of me beating the crap out of Chris Tanker's <laughs> Trader Wrestler wow. Wow. Uh, on there uh, for Worth the Pain. And I pitched it to him. I was like, hey, why don't we do, like, this, like, feud so, um, and he's like, no, I'm not interested. Like AW like just started at that, at that mm-hmm. point, like it was just announced and he's like, yeah, I'm going to go a different way. And I was like, all right, fine. So I released it anyway. So then it just kind of stalled after that. And then I was like, all right, well, what about, and, and I was like searching for AW stuff. Cause I, I just had a feeling it was going to be big. So I contacted like Brandy Rhodes manager that went nowhere. And then I just found a all elite podcast the no holds barred network and i started working with tiffany and kyle who you also know and uh they were like yeah we want to use dead to me as the theme song and i was like awesome and then they started using my songs for other songs on their podcast and a bunch of people started liking it and they started reaching out to mikey ruckus from AEW and saying hey you need to use him hey you need to use him so mikey was like all right so he contacted me he's like yeah you know, I, I want to use three of your songs. You know, here's what I'm offering you. And I was like, what? So that's how it kind of all started, you know? So and I do ever since then. I do also want to shout out Mikey Ruckus for a second, because that man is one of the uh, the hardest working guys in the industry right now. And even just in like small conversations with him, you know, you hear how much passion he has for it. But even with like how I was able to get a bit with them too, like I, I at one point had asked him, oh, if you ever need any help, I'd love to be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, have you as like a guest or whatnot. And our paths had crossed just more as friends, not so much as AEW at one point. And randomly, I get an email on my phone. He goes, dude, I'm slammed right now. Do you have any music you can send me literally in five minutes? And I'm sitting here wow. in my kitchen. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, I can get you in three. And I just went through my drive. I'm like, what's finished? What's finished? What's finished? It just shot him <laughs> a bunch of music. And it stalled for like a month and a half because I was like, all right, cool. He said that somebody and I didn't hear it. And I'm like, ah, ah. So I just texted him one day. I'm like, so did it ever get used? He goes, yeah, Danny Jordan's going on dark next week. I'm like, what? okay. <laughs> like that would have just fantastic. come. Yeah, he he deserves a lot of credit because as much as he writes, he does, like you said, he asks people for music also and really helps get the names of other independent artists out there, too. And, you know, legendary artists, too. But um, I think a lot of credit goes to it should go to AEW for that part of it also. Absolutely. And very well said, guys. And, you know, in this business, you know, the music I'm using quotes here business, um, you know, it can be very thankless at times, you know, so seeing you guys succeed is great. Um, You know, I've been playing in bands since I was 16. You know, you hear the word promoter and, and things like that. You know, you go play, you know, like in the wrestling world, they say a hot dog and a handshake, you know. You, you know, you'll sell $20 tickets and get a dollar on it. There's no parking at the venue. No one helps you with your gear, you know, that kind of thing. You know, that's kind of sometimes the story. But again, 
again, you're involved also in this great local band community um, and more so now being more involved in this wrestling community. I love that these worlds uh, have collided and I, I love the music community, but also the wrestling community has been so good to me. As I see, it's been very kind to you guys and I love seeing you guys succeed. So that's really, really great. That's the dream and continued success, gentlemen, of course. But I thought this would also be a perfect time to talk about some of the themes going on, more so in the WWE end of things, where uh, you have these really great themes coming out of NXT. A lot of these guys are getting called up. I can go on and on with the example examples. I think for more political or behind the scenes kind of reasons, they're not using certain themes. Uh, you know, first name that comes to mind, I'm sure you guys know, Keith Lee. You have a, a great entrance theme that the the crowd, you know, obviously we have the Thunderdome now, but hypothetically the crowd could sing along with the bask in his glory. Uh, he came out to some sort of kind of generic rock, doo -doo -ga -doo 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 -ga, you know what I mean? And to me, I feel like the entrance is such an important part of your persona, of the pageantry, of your character. Um, I really don't like that they're doing that. I feel also like groups like Retribution, they're taking people who have a lot of those CFO songs and, and lumping them together. Um, again, it's not just purely based on the music, but I do feel the music plays a major role in some of the booking decisions right now. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Uh, I'll throw it back to you, John, first. Any thoughts on, you know, for example, Keith Lee and his new theme? Yeah, I think Keith Lee's theme that we're all familiar with and that we all love deserves a lot of love first and foremost because that is Keith Lee rapping on it, which is insane to think about. And then just how well it fit him down in NXT and his move to the main roster that should have been like, okay, cool, this is going to be cemented. Um, I think that the original theme that he had was just worlds better than what he's using now. And I'm sure they're going to fix it up through time, whatnot. I, I'd like to say they are. I can't guarantee. Um, but that being said, this, I don't think, is just a WWE thing. I think this kind of spans to many promotions. And a lot of promotions nowadays are looking to use themes without a lot of, without, basically for royalty free, right? So they're trying to use it without having to worry about mm -hmm. the royalties. And I can get that and I understand that. Um, I think WWE is such a, big company that they shouldn't be ones that are necessarily worrying about that if they have one that fits super hard to the character. Um, I hope Keith Lee is able to get that theme back. And if not, hopefully Def Rebel can do some really good damage with that. Get Darren on it. I mean, that's, that's what we hope for. You yeah, know? There it is. There but, it is. I mean, yeah, you, wrestling themes can be a make or break sometimes, especially when you have TV. If people hear you and they hear that first thing and they're not invested from you before you even hit the screen, then it's almost like you're dead on arrival. And I hope that that doesn't happen with more stars, but you know, they're really trying to bang out tracks super quick to get rid of a lot of that back catalog. Um, so fingers crossed that they start really hammering in the ones that really fit. Yeah, I think you hit that right on the head. And I remember John, you know, talking to you as soon as that Keith Lee, you know, theme debuted. I'm just like, I'm like, ah, oh, man, like they're not even trying. It's such an important thing. And you're like, well, you know, sometimes they're under the gun as far as, you know, cranking stuff out. So you got to kind of look at it from all angles, as, as you guys are certainly familiar with. Darren, any thoughts on kind of these these new themes that they're kind of cranking out? Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Keith Lee's new theme, but like as long as it fits a character. You know, um, like it should be an evolution of their character because music is so important in the wrestling community, not to toot our own horns or anything like that, but no, um, go for yeah, it. So, as, as long as it fits the, the character and there's like an evolution of character. Uh, I was uh, watching or listening to an interview with again, Mikey Ruckus and he was talking about lyrics and how fans really love lyrics, but production doesn't like lyrics and, and songs um, hmm. because it's like another voice uh, so you have like, you know, the crowd noise, then you have the commentators, then you have the lyrics then you have the music. So it's just like a bunch of different stuff going on at one time. So it like muddies the production or, or it makes it harder for the video production side of it, which I get. Like, it makes total sense. Unfortunately, he told me that after I released the MJF <laughs> cover, but, but uh, or I, I saw that after that, but you know, as long as it fits, like, as long, you know, or the song gives the character, the wrestler, uh, as much heat as possible, or, or as much, you know, a big pop as possible, that's, that's all I care about, you know? It's enhancing wow. them. 
I always, when I work with a lot of wrestlers too, I always try to get a feel as to what, like exactly like you said, right? Who are you? Where are you going? And, you know, what do we see for you? But one of the questions I always ask is, are you looking for your song to have lyrics? And it's exactly like you said, when you get into the production world, like if you're, let's say, going to maybe an indie show where, you know, you don't have the announcers coming through the sound speakers live, you don't really have to worry about that. But like you said, once you start getting into, you know, something that's broadcast, even on something like Fight TV or like AEW is with TNT. That's when you really start seeing that conflict. You have JR talking, you have Excalibur talking, then you have these lyrics, then you have the music, then you have the crowd. It's all of a sudden just this giant stack. So even for me, a lot of times I'm like, I'd love to include more vocalists on what I do. But I tell wrestlers a lot of the time, like if you're not really hell bent on having lyrics, you're going to see a little bit more of a benefit for people to focus on you and for the commentating team to build you up because they're not going to have to compete with the lyrics. I apologize, my man. I apologize because, again, you're great, but it, it's tough sometimes to get those lyrics in there. So I, I actually, uh, I mean, again, this is why I want to get all of us together because I feel like we're all going to get uh, different opinions here. But, again, I'm, I'm very open-minded, and I'm learning from what you were both saying. Darren, to your point, man, uh, I feel like, and, and we're not knocking anybody here, but, you know, you guys work with these guys for sure, but I feel like the lyrics are important. That's just my personal um, feeling, you know, in choruses or pre-choruses where the fans are chanting along with that part of the song or a certain melody or a theme um, that repeats over and over again. And I feel like certain, you know, certain wrestlers themes are, are missing that. And again, the entrances are so, so important. So it's interesting to me when you say, Hey, the lyrics get tangled with the commentary, with the crowd noise. I never thought of it that way. Like I'm, I'm learning something here. I think there could be a happy, medium though i you know i really do i feel like the lyrics are very important and this is coming from a drummer guys that's all i'm gonna say but i do feel if you get the right cadence um and the right mix especially in that chorus if you have something that the the crowd can sing along to you know you guys are tailgating at wrestlemania whatever it is you're gonna be cranking that music you know uh we were all you know at wrestlemania 35 here in in jersey not new york in new jersey um you know we're all cranking the music we're all doing the entrances you know the guys are doing the stone cold you know all that stuff And again, you know, there are certain themes where they didn't have music and they're perfect or lyrics rather, and they're perfect. And then they've gone and done the remixes and you hear the lyrics and you're like, ah, maybe you shouldn't have done that. So it it does go both ways, but I think there's a happy medium because I think when you crank out a lot of themes with no lyrics, um, you know, you, a lot of times you attach the lyrics to certain wrestlers. So that's just my, my thought on that, but get your guys vibe on this. And I'll throw it to this. Well, I'll throw it to you guys on this. Two questions here. Uh, one of my favorite themes currently uh, would be the Rebel Heart theme for Johnny Gargano. Uh, it, it's a it's a banger. It's got that punk rock feel. Um, I think it, it contrasts with uh, Champa's theme. A lot of like the chord progressions and inversions and stuff like that. They're always like the Rebel Heart, the Chrome Heart. So I love little subtleties like that. That's one of my favorites. Obviously, I'm not going to rant about the Johnny heel turn because I would go on for 20 minutes about that. But he doesn't use that song anymore. Again, maybe that had something to do with the whole CFO thing. I don't know. But um, what are some of your guys' favorites and your thoughts on the the old Gargano theme towards the the new Gargano theme? Not the heel turn, per se, but uh, your favorites and then your thoughts on on the likes of, like, a Rebel Heart. Ooh, that's a, that's Go a good question. I like how you started off with Rebel Heart. Um, yeah, if you listen to the, D- the DIY theme and then you listen to Rebel Heart and you listen to No One Will Sur- or, yeah, No One Will Survive, there's kind of themes that have run through all of them. So I think that super subtlety adds to the dynamic. Um, exactly. I, again, I get that they had to change it for Gargano's. Um, I think Gargano and Candice LeRae are having a little difficulty in their heel turn personally. Um, but again, is that solely to the music? No, but I like Rebel Heart more personally. Um, favorite themes, damn, that's that's a can of worms, my man. Um, I'll about- always say Kane's original theme will always go down as one of my favorites easily because when you think about a theme for a wrestler, it's not just something that sounds bomb when it's coming through like your headphones, or your studio. It's again, if you're not selling the character before you hit the ring then you could do some more work on the theme. And Kane's, as soon as he hit that organ and everything just went to shit, like that was, <laughs> you knew for a fact, like that was, you knew that was it. So for me, from a tactical standpoint, that was always one of my favorites. Um, Nakamura is just from a 
theme standpoint is just so just super boss and probably for me one of the last themes in a while that was really like here's the staple of the character but not not the one with the japanese rap the new the original one when he came in so those are two of my favorites very very well said man and that goes back to our point of lyrics versus no lyrics nakamura's theme was perfect you know i remember nxt coming to asbury park before a lot of those guys were on tv and uh everyone just oh you know singing to i can't sing i'm a drummer but the <laughs> shinsuke you know the whole crowd doing it then you know the heel turn we're gonna add lyrics so the crowd can't do that so again that i felt was a disservice to the theme regardless of the heel or the face turn. And as you pointed out, not to go too far into it, I felt the payoff for the heel turn for uh, Gargano and Candice would have been Candice ultimately taking that women's NXT championship. I felt that was a missed opportunity at the last takeover, but really good point. And I will say this, I did love the finger 11 version of Kane's theme yeah, again. That was a great one lyrics, too. Really, really good when they brought in like, you know, the likes of Our Lady P's finger 11, all those bands coming in. Uh, story of the year, all that stuff. Darren, your thoughts on what they did with like the Rebel Heart theme, and then some of your favorites. Um, one of my my first favorite theme is Hulk Hogan's Real American. Like that was the one. Oh. Like I, 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 that's what got me in. You know, it just like his matches weren't great, but was his music hit. You know, that was it. You know, um, but yeah, Undertaker is a, like again. It's like. Depending on who who he's feuding with, the matches wouldn't be the greatest. But as soon as you hear the gong, you uh, all, all you know always be excited for it. I, I love Kane's uh, theme. I'm trying to think, like now, obviously like Jericho, but again, that's like you know lyrics and stuff like that. So, um, and as far as the Gargano thing, I like the Rebel Heart theme the best. I, I really don't like the new one. Yeah. Yeah. I think you hit it right on the head. I mean that, you know, he's a heel coming out. If he came out to rebel heart, wouldn't really make sense, but I I'm just very, very nervous guys. And again, we have the part two of the draft, I believe tonight on Monday night raw, uh, that they are going to call up Gargano and Candace. That's a big rumor. Just like, uh, the new day split was a big rumor leading up to Friday's SmackDown. Uh, I'm afraid that uh, Gargano is going to come up and come up as heel. And we're never going to hear Rebel Heart again, ever, just for, you know, licensing or royalties or whatever it may or may not be, man. And that that is his character. But I, I will spare you the Gargano rant. But um, uh, I do want to bring up what's her names real quick. Um, please. Candice LeRae's. And I yes. think that I think Candice LeRae's is a decent theme. And it, I don't think it gets enough love. But I also think, again, it's really speaking to what a character is. And I can't even remember what hers was before time again. I think it was some sort of poppy stuff, but her new one starts off with kind of like that dark kind of fairy thing and then goes into something a little bit heavier. That one is really a lot better, I think, than Johnny Gargano's. But I think, and this is kind of one thing I think, Darren, you'll be able to couple with me on this too. You want to fit the character, but you also want to really fit that specific person. I think sometimes it runs the risk of, okay, who's this person? They're a bad guy. Fuck it. Let's just throw a double base in there and make it in right. a minor key, and that's it. You know, right. I think I think sometimes you have to be like, this is actually something I spoke to Jim Johnston about, because I sent a couple of my songs to him, and he gave me some feedback. And one thing is, um, he, speaking about The under. He goes, yeah, man, um, think about The Undertaker's theme. His was, like, so iconic. And I kind of pushed back on him. I was like, yeah, that's totally cool. But, like, a lot of people don't remember someone like Owen Hart's theme, for example. Like, how do you get around somebody who's not, like, a character, but who's just a wrestler? And with that, he was like, you have to think of who the character is going to be. Not just who do they think they are, but what do you think their trajectory in the course of wrestling is going to be? And I think sometimes, you know, you can run the risk of it just being like, okay, they're a bad guy, they're heavy, put it in harmonic minor, that's fine. Or, oh, they're a good person, so just make it punk rock, that's it. Um, I think Candice runs the, the risk of that a little bit, but Candice is just so goddamn good in ring that it, I almost don't care, <laughs> you know? But I, I wanted to use that kind of as an example, too, for a few things. Like, it, for anyone who's looking to get into wrestling themes, totally cool to do, but don't just kind of think evil, minor, happy, major, think like that. Really get in touch with the character, really find out who the wrestler is, and really try to drive that narrative home. Like, what catchphrases do they have? Are they a submission specialist? You know, like, what do they, those kinds of things. Like, really try to dive into that shit, too. 
Very well said. And again, I'm really enjoying this guy's talking to you guys. And big shout, obviously, to Jim Johnson, one of the all time greats in terms of just these classic, classic, amazing themes. Um, so I did want to ask you guys. And again, hopefully that we're not going to, you know, see like the Chompa theme go away, the Undisputed Era theme go away, which I'm really nervous about moving forward. But speaking of moving forward, what are your guys kind of short term goals, maybe in terms of like the indie scene, which, you know, I think we all all three of us love very much and, and just owe so much to here. And then some of your long term goals. And, you know, I, I have some guesses where you guys want to end up with with your music again in this. You know, I think Mark Cuban said said it himself on Shark Tank. The music business is one of the hardest businesses to invest in or make it in or whatever it is. So what are your guys goals? I'll throw it to you first, Darren. Uh, just to do as many things as, as possible uh like and just collaborate more and grow as a musician like the the mjf cover was kind of like a throwback to the chris danker thing but it also like i would never ever do a rap ish song or feature anybody like that so it's a thing for me that i was like oh it could work um but i wasn't sure and you know it's just to, just to experiment you know and just just grow. I mean, uh, I also work uh, as a camera operator for uh, GoPro Wrestling, who has done uh, uh, a bunch of federations. We're at Synergy. Uh, I actually saw uh, Mimi wrestle for the first time. I filmed one of her matches. And I was like, oh, she needs a theme. And then I met you, and you're like, yeah, I'm doing a theme. I was like, awesome. What theme is it? Mimi. So I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. Yeah. Are you bro? <laughs> great minds though great minds exactly you know we always had to be like that but you know it's just like crazy how like uh, again like it's it's a world uh, in that like and music and wrestling are so like the life of a wrestler and the life of a musician are, the parallels are, are very similar with yes. that kind of stuff so like i just i just love it and i just want to collaborate as much as much as possible maybe uh get on one, one of your tracks and, absolutely yeah totally. and uh yeah we can do a, a collaboration uh but that's pretty much it like you know like john i'm a solo singer songwriter like moonlighting is a band and uh yeah just collaborate as much as possible and grow I love it, man. I'm, I'm seeing like the the dream team forming right here. I'm, I've got these guys not in the same room, but the same uh, Skype chat here. So I Did love we it. Just become best friends. Yup. <laughs> you want to do karate in the garage? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Darren, I love what you said about, I thought the first indie show I went to, I see the guys that going around with their eight by tens with their t-shirts, selling them out of boxes, walking around. I'm like, this is me with a CD. For those listening, a CD is a compact disc. They don't make those anymore. <laughs> I digress. Musician uh, joke right there. But uh, hey, what do you call a guy that hangs out with musicians? A drummer. Anyway, John, what are your thoughts? <laughs> but um, what are your thoughts on, on your goals moving forward? Yeah, definitely. So right now I am the... Uh, main composer for the United Wrestling Network, which does primetime live, uh, championship wrestling from Hollywood and all the things under that umbrella. Um, so right now I have a, a fair amount of themes that I'm working on for them, for a variety of people. And just continuing to really dive in and give you know wrestlers what they need when it comes to their soundscape. Same thing, being able to collaborate with a lot of great musicians across the, you know, across the globe, even here in Jersey, as you two gentlemen obviously are. And we're really able to do a lot of great things for wrestlers really i guess to sum it up would be be the sonic picture for the wrestlers you know um long-term goal would be to just keep doing what i'm doing you know um, i'm really happy to be with united wrestling network and i want to see that grow um that's coupled with nwa and they're doing things with that uh, but i'd love to just keep writing more and more um my, uh, a good friend of i will say a good friend of mine but a good friend of our podcast chris van vliet he ended up having this thing that um he said when he originally started doing interviews, he wanted to do 50 interviews in a year. And I'm like, that's awesome. I want to take that. I want to do 50 themes in a year. And that didn't happen. But it was like probably like maybe 30 or so that happened in 2019. And, um, you know, I want to kind of keep that going, keep setting the small goals, just be able to keep getting to that next level, keep getting to that next step and uh, just keep giving wrestlers what they deserve in terms of their sonic image. So. Wow, very well said. And I'm loving the name drop, guys. Shout out to CVV. That's our dude. The guy's uh, the man. 
Yeah, but that's what it's all about. Like, even talking to you guys, you know, Darren and I was fortunate enough to meet in person at Synergy uh, by chance. John, I've never met you in person, but we were able to work together to do music together. And that's what it's all about. So I'm excited to see if you guys, you know, work together on stuff. Again, if you ever need a live drummer, just saying, I know a guy. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it's just great for the wrestlers. I can tell that they're very appreciative. Um, real quick, uh, I wanted to ask you guys what was kind of the feedback that you guys get uh, from wrestlers when you when you work on themes for them like what's what's the response uh, you get Darren your your your, uh, your feedback well uh, I know with like Lee Johnson like uh, all the things that I've gotten with with that like Mikey Rockets he's like so uh, with Lee Johnson for example like I submitted the three songs like a year before like AEW Revolution, the first like promo that went with uh, MJF, and like right before that, I started working with GoPro, and like I met MJF. We didn't make eye contact for very long, but <laughs> I met him, you know. So it was just like that serendipity kind of thing. Uh, that like that was the match that I really wanted to see on that pay per view, and that they used my song for that. Um, but Lee Johnson was like, "Yeah, we have a wrestler coming in. He's." probably going to debut next week and then similar to john's story nothing happened and i was like okay i thought you said he was going to be on sorry i don't know when he's because this is like right when covid happened so he's like yes. i have no idea we're taping like crazy i was like okay no problem and then i saw lee johnson uh you know use use the song and he's been using it consistently th this whole time so um but yeah and as far as like njf i just wanted to do something because yeah, uh, you know, I had that first song as the AEW Revolution promo, and then I met him very briefly, but it, he kind of, it was just kind of serendipity. So I was like, I'll just put it out there and see what happens. And the response has been really, really good. So that's awesome, man. That's the dream. And John, I, you know, I know a lot of these guys that I know personally are very appreciative of you doing their themes. Uh, my friends like the stepdads, uh, Mimi, who I see all the time around in this area. What's the response you get from them when you write these songs for them? It's always just a strong air of appreciation, you know, as much as, you know, we have podcasts, as much as I have a podcast, as much as I'm a big wrestling fan, I don't know what happens in the ring. I don't, I'm not the person who knows the training that they put in day to day in the ring, in the gym, the dieting, all this kind of crazy stuff that you have to do. Um, so for me, I always try to put that out there in my own way to, you know, really be that part of their music, their wrestling endeavors. So whenever I finish up a theme, even through the process, a lot of the times, whether it's like, hey, can we fix this? Can we fix this? Or it's like, holy shit. By the end, they're just like, I can't believe this. Thank you so much. And for me, it's always like, I've never stopped being a fan. So I'm never not, I'm never like, oh yeah, of course I did that. You know, I'm never like that. But like, it's just always really cool to see that wrestlers are just so appreciative. And they're just like, I always want to have kind of my own sonic staple. And like we talked about, before you even see me and when I'm in the ring, they need to know who I am. And it's always just that feedback from them that uh, that's always super cool. But it's always really, really appreciative. It's always just like really humble. And um, I haven't worked with anyone, thankfully. And wrestlers are, in my opinion, like the coolest people in the world. Um, I've never worked with one who's been like an egotistical person. You know, anyone that I even thought would have been never has been. Um, yeah, I just think every wrestler I've worked with has been just the most appreciative, coolest person. And they're also kind of like, I, I'm giving you some feedback. I'm so sorry if this comes off kind of weird and I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like, no, no, no. Any feedback you have, it's your song. We're going to get it right until you are completely satisfied and it fits you. Give me all the feedback. Even if you say it sucks, start over. That's fine, too. But again, everybody's just been really communicative, really nice and just really appreciative. So it's been super cool. Love it, man. And yeah, like we always say here on the BCP, especially when we're talking with musicians, wrestlers, no egos, just egos. That's what we do here on the BCP. <laughs> but anyway, late jokes aside, guys, uh, thank you so much for a few minutes. And I do want to point this out to all the wrestlers listening uh, that are checking into the live stream. And we'll be streaming this later, probably tonight after Raw. Um, you know, how can people, wrestlers who may want a theme, may want a unique customized theme that they can use on the indies that they can use without any copyright issues or anything like that, um, how can they reach out to both of you guys? I'm not going to put one over the other here. To either of you guys, Darren, we'll start with you first. Uh, yeah, you can just reach out to me. Uh, there's thesewolves.com. You can email me at thesewolvesmusic at gmail.com. Find me on social media at these underscore wolves. Um, pretty much everywhere. And uh, 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. I just want to collaborate, so let me know. Dig it, yeah, and there's a lot of great towns out there. John, how can people get in touch with you? Sure thing. First name, last name, music at gmail.com. So J-O-H-N-A-E-R-N-A-N, music at gmail.com. Um, there's the website by the same name, Facebook, Instagram, all of it's just John Kiernan Music. Shoot me a DM, shoot me an email. We'll get something going for you. I'll send you a playlist of some themes that I've done. We'll see if we could hook up with this beautiful sweetheart over here named Darren, this beautiful guy named Rob, and we'll get some stuff going for you. Dream team. I love it, man. I love it. putting each other over. That's what it's all about here in the wrestling biz. Hey, gentlemen, thank you so much. This is a lot of fun. We covered a lot of topics that, you know, just looking at the wrestling world through this music perspective was a lot of fun. You know, worlds colliding for me. So this was awesome. I can't think of two better guests to have had tonight. So, guys, thank you so much uh, for a few minutes of your time and continued success moving forward. Thank you for the time, too. It's so cool to talk about wrestling and talk about music and wrestling with people, man. So thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Anytime, guys. Uh, and we'll definitely be back. I, I have a feeling we'll be doing this more than once. So thank you guys for, for much, uh, so much for a few minutes of your time. And guys, like we always say here on the BCP, everyone, stay safe, stay positive, and take care of each other. We are out. Peace.